So this mixture behind me is actually one of my favorite mixes for whitetail deer slash wild turkey. If I was only doing it for wild turkey, I would leave out the arrow leaf clover because it gets too tall. And by this time of year, now this has been hit pretty hard, but arrow leaf often, especially if it's a big field of it, will be up so tall the turkeys don't want to walk through it. They can't see. But deer love arrow leaf and crimson. The nice thing about putting arrow leaf and crimson in a mix together is it'll extend the, the grazing season for deer by about a month. Arrow leaf is about to shut down. It's blooming right now. Uh, I'm sorry, crimson, and, and it's gonna be done soon. And so about the time one is going out, the other's coming on. So it'll extend your grazing period by about a month. And actually this mixture provides pretty high quality forage for about nine or 10 months of the year. Arrow leaf and crimson also reseed themselves very well, but it takes a little bit of management. Now, what, if you wanted this plot to reseed itself, what you're gonna have to do is wait for the clo clover to completely die. Both of these clovers are annuals. So by July, they should be browned out. And it may be a little later this year because of the weather we're having, but by mid-July, certainly, they should be done. Give them a week or so to make sure all the seed has shattered. You want that seed on the ground, and then come in and mow it as low as you can. And I wanna mow it as close as I can to when that seed shattered as possible. I don't wanna to wait till late August. The reason being, I want that uh, mowed vegetation to have a lot of time to decompose and break down so that when this seed uh, germinates in late August or early September, it's got good seed to soil contact and there's not a lot of litter over the top of it, but most of that's had a chance to break down. So as soon as you see it brown out, go in there and mow it as low as you can. And then you might have to do some herbicide if you're having a weed issue. Some years you might not have to do any spraying at all. But if you do spray, you can just spray glyphosate and make sure you spray by mid-August because by late August, the clover seed could be germinating, all right? So that is a really way to have a reseeding annual plot that produces a ton of forage. And then you can also add in wheat or oats um, oats, if you're in southern Oklahoma, uh, oats are slightly more preferred by deer than wheat is. But in northern Oklahoma, where I live, oats don't make it through most winters. Sometimes they do, but uh, like even this year, oats were winter killed. So they're not as cold tolerant. Only when you've got wheat and oats together will deer prefer oats. If they don't have oats available, they like wheat just fine. Um, so this plot has some uh, weed, although I use that term loosely, but it has some plants in it that were not planted, but they're not all necessarily a problem. Um, some of these are actually desirable by wildlife. This yellow hop clover you see, wild turkey love this. Not only will they eat the, they're eating the blooms right now, like I, I've killed so many turkey that have this in their crop during April. Um, not only do they eat the plant itself, but clovers, whether it's a, 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 you know, a yellow hop clover or these planted clovers attract a lot of insects, especially grasshoppers. This is excellent brood cover. When the poults start coming off the, the nest here in another week or two, this is a great place for a turkey to bring poults, especially if the cover is low like this. Now, if it was up really tall with a lot of air relief, it'd be a little less desirable. They'll still use the edge, but they might not go out into the, the middle. Also, um, there, what did I, I saw something else in here. Well, oh, ragweed, where did I see that? Common ragweed right here. This is outstanding deer forage during May. In fact, other than the clover, I've seen nothing on our walk that deer prefer more right now than they do annual ragweed. Also produces seed for quail and wild turkey, but it's excellent deer forage during early summer. So some of these plants that you may have come in your plot aren't necessarily a problem if you're doing this for deer or turkey. Somebody asked, is there something I can plant that I can have for several years? This is a good one, particularly if you care about high quality deer forage during the spring and early summer and excellent uh, uh, turkey uh, feeding areas during the early summer. This, this is a great 
option. And you can keep this plot going for, I've had them go for three or four years without much problem with only mowing and occasionally spraying uh, weed problems. Mostly grassy weeds is what I'll have a lot of problems with this. Uh, things like cheat grass that you can see here. This isn't an issue, but if you let this cheat go a couple years, it'll start to really dominate. And you might have to spray a grass selective herbicide like clethodum. Clethodum will absolutely smoke annual grasses. Not great on perennial grass weed issues, but really good for annual grasses. I would never pick alfalfa over crimson or arrowleaf clover in the eastern part of the state. The reason being is um, even though alfalfa can produce a lot of tonnage and deer and turkey certainly like it, when we've done preference studies, they generally prefer crimson clover or ladino clover or arrowleaf clover more than they do alfalfa. Also alfalfa can be disease prone or pest prone. There's some s certain pests that you have to worry about with alfalfa. Uh, but if I was in western Oklahoma in, in a real arid area, where you might only get 15, 20 inches of rain a year, it's gonna be really hard to grow a lot of the clovers unless you have a sub-irrigated spot. So in Western Oklahoma, alfalfa is a good option for a legume because alfalfa can be, if you get the right variety, some of the varieties are extremely drought tolerant and it's a perennial. So it, you can keep it going for you know, many years, at least three or four typically before it starts really thinning out. So. It's, it's a good option for more arid areas, um, but I, I find it not as useful in Eastern Oklahoma. You guys have any thoughts on that? I've had several people want to plant alfalfa for their deer plot. They want something perennial that's gonna come back and always be there. Uh, the problem that I've seen with it, at least in here especially, is right now it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. um, it's there. But if you got down on your hands and knees and found some, it's all chewed up from weevils yeah, right well, now. Alfalfa weevil will turn it gray. This time of year they eat it up. Yeah, they will absolutely eat it up. And so it can be hard to establish in some cases. And if you can get it going, it's great. But you're going to need some serious weed management in order to make it work. Um, and some insect management if you really want it to look good. Um, so there are easier options. I guess the one thing I should mention where alfalfa might be a little bit superior to crimson and arrowleaf is if we, get the, if we get the right rain in the fall, it might come on pretty good in the fall, whereas the crimson and arrowleaf are still really low. So if you wanted something to attract deer in September, arrowleaf and crimson, they're Deer will eat it, but it's, you know, it's, it's not doing a lot of production yet. So some years alfalfa might outproduce crimson and air leaf during the fall, but you know, that just depends on the rainfall. If we don't get a lot of rain, it's not gonna produce much. What's next? Ladino. So the perennial clovers, white clover, ladino clover, uh, purple clover, they're, they're used a lot just because people don't want to replant, um, and that's certainly a viable reason to plant them. I find myself recommending Ladino less than I do Crimson and Airleaf for a couple of reasons. One is the annuals typically produce more tonnage than perennials. So I'd rather get more tonnage, more production off these annual clovers because I'm willing to go in and mow them every year. Now, if, if, I, if I didn't want to have to do as much management, I might consider a perennial clover. However, you're going to have to manage your weeds. So you're not going to get out of management altogether. So if you're doing a perennial just because you don't want to do any management, I would rethink that. If you're doing a perennial because you don't want to have to plant, put seed in the ground every year, then that might be a good option. Although if you're using a reseeding annual, it's essentially doing the same thing for you. But on the Ladino, you're going to definitely have to do weed management. Um, it does produce a lot of tonnage. It's, it's usually not going to outperform the annual clovers behind you guys. Uh, the other reason that I, I find myself not recommending it as much is that it, it tends to be a little invasive. It will leave your plot. Now, that's not the worst thing in the world because it is a desirable wildlife plant, but I like things that I plant that aren't native to stay where I put them. And crimson and arrowleaf, in my experience, they stay where you put them. 
Purple clover and Ladino white clover do not. They will leave the plot. So that is a consideration. Although in a lot of properties I go on, the cat's already out of the bag and they've got white clover spread all over the property. So in that case, it may not be an issue. But if I went into a pristine area and there's no white clover, I am not gonna recommend white clover. We're gonna use something that I know will stay put and I can contain it. Does that make sense? It does stay low, which is good for bugging, for uh, turkey poults. So that's one nice thing about it. The good things about chicory, small seed, you can top sow it. You don't have to even cover it. It is really palatable. Deer absolutely love it. Turkey will use it some, but it's mostly planted for deer. It's perennial. And once it's established, it is tough. It doesn't look like it's that tough of a plant, but it is. It's very drought tolerant and it's very grazing tolerant. So those are all the good attributes of chicory. Bad attributes of chicory, it can get too big. That's not gonna be a problem here, but if you had low deer density, it'll get so big that then they won't use it anymore. So in some situations with lower deer density, you actually have to come in and mow it midsummer to get it to re-sprout from the root so that deer will actually use it. So that's a potential problem. Another problem with chicory is while it's tough once it's established, I wish we could dig a couple of these up. They have, these have tap roots right now this long. I mean, it is really a long taproot, but in the initial planting stage, it's sensitive and it can be easily grazed out of a plot. And for chicory, I always recommend a nurse crop. I like to put wheat or oats in the mix to take some of that grazing pressure off during the fall, because this is a fall seeded plant. August and September is when we put the seed down and the deer will absolutely hammer it as soon as it's out of the ground. And if you plant it by itself or in a small acreage, and when I say small, like an acre is small for this plant, the deer are gonna wipe it out. And, and you'll, you won't get much chicory through the winter. But if you plant a larger plot, put a nurse crop in it, and keep the deer density down a little bit on your property, this can be a good option. And even though it's used a lot in the southeastern United States, this is a great option for western Oklahoma, if anybody has property out there, because it's so drought tolerant. In fact, if you go through northern New Mexico in July, you'll see this plant all in the ditches blooming. It's escaped. Um, and for that reason, some people have been reluctant to plant chicory because it does naturalize and escape. However, um, what I've seen is anywhere chicory can establish, it's pretty much already been there a long time because we've had chicory in the United States forever. And uh, it was grown for coffee, uh, used a lot in the Civil War for that. So, uh, and, and it seems like actually a lot of these modern forage varieties of chicory are way less invasive than the ones that were here in the 1800s. I don't see chicory leaf plots very much, even though it's naturalized in the state. Any questions about this plant? I will tell you that I recently, we've got a food plot app. Some of you might have it on your phone. If you don't, you can download it for free for Android or, or iOS. Just type wildlife food plot in, in your app store and chicory is listed in there for deer. Um, we, it used to say four to six pounds per acre. I have upped that because after planting this a little while, I think that's too light. I, even in a mix, I find that I end up in the spring with a very low chicory density. So I actually am now recommending eight to 10 pounds of seed per acre, which is a lot of seed because it's really a, a tiny seed. You're gonna have some deer, some mortality from deer herbivory. So that's enough, I think that's one of the reasons the, th the stand ends up thinning out. If you had it in a greenhouse, four to six, eight is probably about right four to six pounds per acre, but where you're having some killed by deer, that seems to end up being a little light. Austrian winter peas are put in plot mixes a lot. Deer love them. Uh, in fact, they love them too much. A lot of times they'll wipe them out. My experience in mixes, one of the problems with winter peas is it's a big seed. And so if it's in a mix with clovers, a lot of times you won't get good germination to begin with because the seed didn't get deep enough. If I was gonna plant this, I would look for a mix with all, with, with plants that have similar seed depth requirements, or I would plant it separate. Plant it first and then overseed uh, the, the, plant, the seeds that require a shallower depth. So you could do it in two stages like that. 
because what I see with this in a mixture often with small seeded, small seeded plants is you get very few winter peas that actually germinate and they're gone by Christmas because the deer have just wiped them out. But they do love it. It's, it's a nice plant. 